poem was written by yours truly, for I feel that a woman's lips are poetry. Today we will be exploring the woman's lips in the portrait, which are second only to the eyes in beauty and importance. So we will go over my three value method when painting realistic lips. We will also go over the tools that I use, such as the colored pencil, the razor blade, and erasers. And I do this to achieve a certain amount of realism, but not photorealism. That is not what I'm after. I am after a beauty. I'm after the life force. How to paint the lips and the eyes and the nose and the hair as one whole unit. I do not go all the way into detail first, but bring everything up together. Today we'll be going over how I develop the lips and not go too far ahead of other aspects of the portrait. So let's get started. You see right now I'm using the eraser to smooth out any areas that are too harsh, maybe help uh, soften some dark edges. I like the eraser because it's, uh, it's abrasive, yet it doesn't damage the surface. And then once I go ahead and finish with the eraser, I'll go soften it up with the airbrush. And now once again, I'm going to be using something to scratch the surface. And this time it's going to be the razor blade itself. Now I'm going to establish some highlights but um, this stage I'm actually going to soften them up and then come back again. The most important thing I feel when painting the lips is to make them soft. No harsh lights and darks. That is crucial to me I feel. And with my three value method of the lips you'll notice that I have a light, a mid-tone, and a dark. Now this is not including the darkest dark or the dark accents or the very light accents which are the highlights. And you'll see as I go further when I add those elements how this uh, painting and the lips in particular are going to start to pop. And you'll see with the razor blade I'm able to very lightly, very, very, very lightly scratch out some lights which I'll actually go and dust over again because they can be too harsh. And you'll see I'm creating some texture as well with those lips following the form of the lips. Here, the introduction of the colored pencils where the upper and lower lips meet. I'll go ahead and put some red accents and maybe echo some of that red color in the bottom lip. When you echo color and value throughout elements of the portrait, the painting begins to have continuity. And I have this lighter color, this lighter pink, just to soften up some of those hard edges that were created by the razor blades when I was scratching out the highlights. And I'm going to dust over this again uh, with the airbrush. And you see I have this sort of burnt umber, this brown color that I use to even further create some accents where the upper and lower lips meet. Now I have this almost navy color, this navy blue color, and you see I put that for the darkest accents, but not leaving that as it is, that navy color, but going over it with this scarlet red. Any kind of dark almost black color in the portrait just doesn't work. You definitely have to glaze over it with red as you see especially in this nostril here. When you glaze over it with the red 
becomes translucent and has the feeling of flesh. And you can see here going back again over it with the airbrush to soften some of those hard edges created by the eraser, the razor blade, and the colored pencil. Also making sure that I follow the contours with the lips still to create that sense of volume, three-dimensional feel for it. Now I had that really nice red color. I was able to echo that in the transition tone where the darkest darks and the bridge of the nose meet. And you want to do that once again. You want to echo colors and values throughout the portrait to create a sense of unity. Now we're going to go ahead and scratch out the highlights. And I'm doing that with the X-Acto knife. Still making sure I'm paying attention to what I'm, I'm painting with the reference material and making sure I don't scratch too hard, just enough to get to the white gesso underneath the paint. And you'll see that while I'm working with those highlights, I can see that certain areas of the upper lip are too dark and I erased them. This is why it's so important to bring everything up together, not going too far ahead with detail and then working to the next area in detail. You want to paint the ensemble. So remember my three value technique in the lips, you have your light, you have your mid-tone and your dark. And this is not including the dark accents or the highlights. If you stick to those colors, mix them separately, you will have a much easier time creating lips. Another nice secret is uh, also to work on your edges when you have your darkest darks established. And that's what I'm doing using this freehand shield, reiterating the beautiful hard edge of the underplane of the nose and also this cast shadow created by the nose. And you'll see as I go ahead and pull that up, it looks that much more realistic. Also, if you notice the upper lip just sort of dissolves into the shadow. Our proclivity or our propensity is to always try and delineate everything, but we always have to see things as they are, making sure we pay attention to edges and contrast of edges. That is where the reality really does lie. So, looks like we're coming to the conclusion of this portrait and, or actually this demo of the lips in airbrush. So don't forget to watch my live stream this Wednesday at 9.30 on Facebook, 9.30 p.m. I'm doing that every week. Also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and hit the like button and comment. Take care.